forgotten. On Tuesday, Donald Trump deepened the divide with the GOP establishment, refusing to endorse House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senator John McCain in their primary races later this month. Major Garrett reports. Less than two weeks after a convention that labored to demonstrate party unity, Donald Trump today refused to endorse House Speaker Paul Ryan or Arizona Senator John McCain in their respective primary elections. I like Paul, but these are horrible times for our country, Trump told the Washington Post. We need very strong leadership, and I'm just not quite there yet. Ryan used almost the exact same words in May as he struggled to endorse Trump. As for McCain, Trump told the Post... I've never been there with John McCain because I've always felt that he should have done a much better job for the vets. Trump has offered few specifics on what he would do for veterans, but got a boost from Lieutenant Colonel Lewis Dorfman today in Virginia. A man came up to me and he handed me his Purple Heart. I always wanted to get the Purple Heart. This was much easier. Trump received five draft deferments during the Vietnam War. I've regretted not serving in many ways, because so many of the greatest people I know have served. John Bircher, a spokesman with the Military Order of the Purple Heart, told us, Donald Trump did not get the Purple Heart, and there's no easy way to get it. I don't think he has any clue as to the meaning of the Purple Heart Medal. Under attack from veterans groups, Trump has tried to soften criticism of his reaction to the parents of fallen Army Captain Himayun Khan, who spoke at the Democratic National Convention. Donald Trump consistently smears the character of Muslims. Trump questioned the Khan's right to speak out and implied their Muslim faith led to Mrs. Khan's silence at the convention. Waiting in line for Trump's rally today, Betsy Wilson said Trump did nothing wrong. He made it fair game when he went on national television in front of many people. Inside the event, Trump took on another unlikely target, babies. Don't worry about that baby. I love babies, so. I love babies. I hear that baby crying. I like it. For decades, others in presidential politics have felt the same. But moments later... Actually, I was only kidding. You can get the baby out of here. Not long after Trump's comments about Ryan and McCain were published, running mate Mike Pence campaigned in Arizona and insisted the GOP is still united. Elaine, Ryan's campaign said it never asked for Trump's endorsement. Interestingly, Trump last night complimented Ryan's long shot primary opponent, Paul Nealon. Uh, Major, if Donald Trump becomes president, he'll certainly need to work with Republican leadership. Does this latest round of friction make any political sense in any way? It does in one sense and one sense only. Trump wants to make sure his supporters know he is relentlessly the outsider. And as the outsider, he will keep arm's length distance, if not longer, between himself and any establishment Republican figures in his way or that are insufficient in their support of him. We didn't mention it in the piece, Elaine, but Trump also said a lot of tough things about Kelly Ayotte, New Hampshire Republican, in a tough re-election bid, said she hasn't been a supporter, hasn't been strong, weak leader. All of these efforts suggest to Trump supporters that Trump will take on the Republican quote-unquote establishment. And for those Trump supporters, and I hear this all the time, they're not interested in the Republican Party. They're not interested in the Republican Party brand name. They're not interested in Republican Party leaders. So in this one narrow construct of the Trump approach to politics, it does make some sense. But in a much larger sense, it is problematic. Trump will need to win New Hampshire. He will need to win Arizona. He often describes putting Wisconsin recently a Democratic state and presidential contest back on the map. Well, to do that, you need a unified party, everyone pulling in the same direction, and everyone focused on a common opponent, in this case, Hillary Clinton. When you are focusing some of your attention negatively on those in your own party, that unity begins to crumble. That makes this, from an electoral college standpoint and a national campaign standpoint, highly problematic. Well, Major, as you are well aware, we seem to go from one controversy involving Donald Trump to the next. And at this point, no single incident seems to make a difference. But I wonder, Major, could there be some kind of cumulative effect here? We've always been looking for it. That has been the watchword along covering the Trump campaign or as people have tried to assess the Trump campaign. Does there become a moment where the effect is cumulative, where you have a sort of heaviness around Trump? 
that weighs on people either in their conscience, their sense of political temperament, or their sense of the presidency itself. Hasn't happened yet, but what we have seen since the end of the Democratic Convention is a noticeable, though not entirely enormous, bounce for Hillary Clinton, four to six points, depending on the poll, and some diminishment of Trump's support. So you see Hillary Clinton with a six to seven, in some cases, eight-point lead. If that becomes a resilient sort of lead, and that sort of gets baked into the polling data we see all through the month of August, then you will know Trump is going to have a tough time in the fall building beyond the base of Republican core support he achieved first in the primary and assumes he will have in a general election. So I can't answer that question. Have we reached a point of critical mass with Donald Trump? I can tell you this. I talked to more than a dozen people waiting online in Ashburn, Virginia today. Eight of the 12 were solid Trump supporters, and nothing to date, he has said, has deterred them from their support of the Republican nominee. All right, Major Garrett, let's see what the next 24 hours brings. Thank you so much. Yeah.